Judy Wiseman, Anthony Giddens, Professor of Sociology here at Tennessee, been at many other institutions, written an awful lot. But just recently, after a lot of work, Press for Time, The Acceleration of Life in Digital Capitalism. It seems to me your conclusion in this book, which goes through the way in which our lives are changed by digital machines, how we have more time and more time, and yet we seem to have less and less time. There's this paradox in the way we conduct ourselves. It seems to me that in the end, you're saying we are to blame for feeling pressed for time. You resist the standard idea that it's the machine and that we're all in the grip of technology outside ourselves. You put the blame fairly on ourselves. Um, that's one way of putting it. I mean, what I was trying to do in the book, I mean, you're right, it's about the paradox of speed, that we have these accelerating technologies that can do wonderful things mm -hmm. very quickly, but we feel very pressed for time. And what I wanted to get at in the book was a more nuanced appreciation of how people, how we relate to technology. And I was very struck reading some historical material, how similar the debates were about the telegraph, about yeah. the railway, about all these other technologies. And, and we, actually, we, we, we incorporated all of those, didn't we? We absolutely but did. We... Actually, we still live in a world with a lot of old technologies that we don't even see, that we take for granted. The electricity under here, the phone system, we just take for granted all these technologies. And what we focus on are the new gadgets, the new sort of sexy gadgets. But what we should do, shouldn't we? What we should do is stop trying to pack so much into the day. That's how I think you criticise us. Because the new technology comes along and instead of having one wash a week, we suddenly have three. Because we have a mobile phone, we decide to talk to somebody in a situation where previously we'd have just walked. Are we at fault for packing too much in? Is that why we all feel hysterically overwrought, even though we're in fact having all these facilities available to us that our parents or grandparents didn't have? Well, I think two things about that. I mean, one thing is that the technology doesn't just speed things up. It makes, as you say, for whole sets of new activities. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not a Facebook person. You know, it's a lot of things I don't do with my technology. But people love these new, what we call affordances. People love the new things that they can do. People actually very much like staying in touch with people during yeah. the day. All sorts of things you can do with this technology. People they've met. Do. I mean, real people. Yes, yes. Well, that there's great potentiality. But... Um, the, con the cultural context, if you like, is one, I think, in which busyness, in which being very busy is associated very much with being successful. Yeah, yeah. But are you, are you just focusing on a small group of people like us? I know lots of people who have the machines, the little mobile phone and so on, but they don't do very much with it because they're not that busy. Is there, it's not automatically the case that when you have these new things, you're busy, is it? Are you too selective in the kind of people from whom you extrapolate general positions about the world at large? I'm trying to say that actually we use the technology in different ways. And so it's very dependent on the context, as you say. Yeah. So um, managerial and professional uh, people use these technologies in particular ways. And you're absolutely right that most of the studies have been on that. But people who are unemployed, people who are old, people who are carers. But they've got people... loads of time, haven't they? I mean, they're not pressed for time at all. Well, that's not the case, actually. If you look at single mothers who do a lot of caring and are working, they are actually very pressed for time. It's nothing to do with the technology, actually. If anything, the technology facilitates a lot of their activities. Oh. Actually, there's an awful lot of things that people are doing that are nothing to do with the technology that make them but feel the very But the first thing pressed. you said there, Judy, mm. the first thing you said there, it seems to me you're almost saying the structure of our capitalistic life is to blame, that we are pressed because of the way in which our economy has drifted in the direction of a kind of capitalist exploitation, and that the machines are neither here nor there so far as that concerned. I think in a capitalism where people are working, have intensification of work and are feeling pressured to work harder, technologies are used in particular ways. But I also very importantly want to stress that we only get a particular small selection of technologies because of who is currently designing the technology. Yeah. Yeah. That one of the things as a sociologist I'm very uh, attuned to and have been arguing now for a good 30 years is that we shouldn't leave technological design to Silicon Valley. You know, we shouldn't leave- To the American white guys. No, we shouldn't leave a bunch of engineers are in charge of defining the future. I mean, actually, what they're doing with producing these technologies is actually defining the present and the future, actually telling us what's valuable in life, how we should live. Do you think, looking at a book called Press for Time, do you think that academics today reading the book will just surf it? Do you think people read carefully now? Did you read carefully when preparing for this? There's so much stuff, incomparably more than there was. It's so much easier to access. 
how many people do you think will study the book, read it in the old-fashioned way, and how many people will just absorb it? Is that the new way of working for an academic press for time? I think these things are terribly exaggerated. I mean, you know, it was like when the Harry Potter books came out. Do you remember? People said, kids have got no concentration. Kids are never going to read a book. And then you find millions of kids sit down and read through these volumes. You know, I just think these stories are extraordinarily exaggerated. And that absolutely, I mean, of course, I do proper research. I, I think one of the mistakes is this sort of substitution model that if we get something new, something else will die. And it seems to me we're living in an age where people are doing both. They've got their Kindle, but they read books. They've got videos, they go to the cinema. You know, people have got very rich lives and I think they're enhanced by these technologies. Judy Wiseman, thank you very much for submitting yourself to this gear to grilling. Thank you.